Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to read through Proverbs, the 29th chapter. You know, as uh, we're in this grace period, we want to um, always take time, you know, to uh, go into these scriptures that deal with, you know, wisdom, you know, uh, where, you know, ultimately you're, you're, you're growing. You constantly want to be in the spirit of growing, you know, knowing, you know, the Lord's plan for this current world, knowing the, his plan for wicked people, proud people. All right. We should be in the spirit of Noah, you know, separating ourselves from the behavior, the mindset, the ways of this this world, in particular, our people in this world. You know, we want amongst the world of Israel, we want the Lord to see faithfulness in us. And that's going to come with, you know, constantly growing, trying to mold yourself to his image, challenging yourself. Okay. And ultimately knowing and understanding that you won't, you don't got it. You need help. As the scriptures say, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And you don't want to think too highly of yourself. All right. And constantly, you know, ask the Lord to forgive you. Constantly ask the Lord to give you the uh, the, the mind and spirit to understand these lessons. All right. The, uh, the deeper things of the scriptures that brothers bring out, not to get emotional. All right. We want to make sure that we're always in the spirit of showing the Lord that, look, we 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 understand we messed up as a nation. OK, and as the remnant, you know, we're of that we're of the opinion that that, that <laughs> look, what we've been doing has not been working. So you have a lot of people who um, they say law, keep the laws. But when it comes to the law of the spirit being in the spirit. OK, taking rebuke. OK, not being self-willed, high minded. These are the things that they lack. Why? Because uh, the, as the scriptures say, wisdom will not enter into a malicious soul. So you have a trend of Israelites who have just gathered a bunch of information and they have knowledge of things, but they're not applying wisdom to their life. They're not using the precepts as commandments. OK, they're not uh, maneuvering through the spirit because every situation that you come into uh contact with in this walk as an Israelite, you're not going to be able to, to technically apply the laws in these situations. So what do you do? You go to wisdom. OK, you ultimately uh, there's a way that we are to walk no matter where you are. You have to be in the spirit. OK, to the best of your ability. And that's ultimately uh, 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 perfecting your sacrifice as we don't want to be of that uh, number that's offering up a wicked sacrifice unto the Lord. That's not acceptable. All right. Remember, there were some of the sons of Aaron who, um, you know, lit the wrong incense. The offered strange, in strange incense accompanied with the sacrifices and the Lord put them to death. All right. So we don't want to be of that number who will ultimately uh, are, are doing this thing in vain. And our sacrifice is bland. You know, even as, you know, men, you know, your woman, you could tell when she put thought into a meal. You Sometimes you'd be like, why in the hell did she cook me this? It was wacky, you know, and you'd be mad. Like she, she, she thinking she don't even, she don't care. She ain't into me. <laughs> right. Well, that's how the Lord feels as we're, as we're the woman of the Lord. All right. We want to make sure that, we're constantly bathing ourselves in this oil and the oil is symbolic of the word. That's what the, uh, under the first covenant, you know, you had the oil that the sons of Aaron would put on. It was all symbolic of a spiritual blessing, you know, and you have a custom of women in the ancient world. They bathe in the oil. Well, this word is likened unto the oil. The Holy spirit is likened unto oil being anointed from on high. And we want to bathe in this oil so that when Yahweh Sends his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai back, you know, it's a sweet savor. Okay, and that's all synonymous with who we are, our behavior, how we walk, how we maneuver, our mindset, our expectation.
putting our emotions to the side. All of these things are a part of growth. Now, I was um, reading here through Proverbs, the 29th chapter, and um, I just wanted to uh, read through the whole thing, and uh, hopefully you brothers and sisters are edified. Um, we're going to start here at verse 1. It says, He that, often, that being often reproved hardeneth his neck, all right, shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. Now, if you see here on the left, I have the King James. Okay. And then on the right, I have the NLT. It's good to go into the NLT sometimes because the way that old English is worded can be challenging. All right. But don't get it twisted. The King James is the superior, in my opinion, to these other translations. However, the Geneva Bible is good too. I like the Geneva Bible. However, um, the reason we go, you see us go into the NLT is because the way that the old English is worded, um, it can be challenging at times. Okay. But, you know, for a particular breakdown, like when you go into the MOTB in Revelation, the 13th chapter, a book like the NLT, the New Living Translation, instead of in their hands or their foreheads in, it'll say on. You know, which you have particular people saying, well, OK, it's going to be a tattoo. It ain't going to be something that goes inside, you know. So in that sense, you don't go to the uh, 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 NLT. But for particular, you know, wordings and things like that, you know, get a better feel of what the scripture is saying. Sometimes you, you can go to it so that, you know, for anybody that was wondering why brothers go into the NLT, because they, they, they make us seem like we're just these guys who say it's the King James or nothing, you know, and, you know, maybe that was a sentiment at one point, but hey, you grow, you grow, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the English language as a whole is flawed, you know, that's why we go back to the original Hebrew and the original Greek at times, just to get more of a uh, understanding, man, remember, we've been detached, so, overall, Let's uh, start here at verse one. It says, he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck. All right. Shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. And you're seeing this spirit grow in Israel right now. We're in the times where we need correction. You need, all right, the heavenly father to have people around you or teachers around you that are going to, you know, tell you about yourself. Okay. As these are our spiritual fathers. As the scriptures tell the father, even in the book of Sirach, don't don't be too nice and playful with your son. All right. Now, it's not wrong with being playful, but you have to. There's a there's a line. There's a point where something you got to get on him. You got to correct them because we're 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 sheep that went astray. And as as beautiful as sheep are, they, they're very simple at times. So we need to be brought back on track. We need to be corrected at times. And sometimes. You know, the, the correction that's being uh, brought out, maybe it's getting on men or maybe it's getting on women. Maybe it doesn't apply to you. You have to have the wherewithal and the Holy Spirit to know, well, this applies to somebody. Somebody needs to hear this uh, correction. And you get out of your emotions because really everything is done through the spirit and the spirit is like the wind. It's not something that you can in particular put your hands on or, or put in a cup or drink. The spirit is like the wind. OK, and the Lord is speaking through his men in these latter days to call our people back. OK, to call our people to, to stay on the right track as sheep. We're walking as shepherds. OK, and the, the, the sheep follow the shepherd. Sometimes the, the, the shepherd have to get rough with the sheep. OK, but it's for their benefit. And in these latter days, there's a lot of correction going on, but. OK, you have particular people who harden their neck when they're reproved. Let's read this in the NLT. Whosoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism. OK, will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. And see, this grace period was for us to grow. Growth sometimes take bitter things like even in your diet. Like we're, we're so used to constantly um, eating the sweet, eating the things that are pleasing to our 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 our, 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 our our taste buds not understanding that you got to take them bitters in too 
How much more, all right, with this, uh, in this walk, with this wisdom, all right? We have to deal with, with the things that correct us as well, okay? And there's a lot of correction going out because there's a decision that's getting ready to be made. So be mindful when, when you get corrected not to be in the spirit of rebellion or being stiff-necked like you can't be told anything. Remember, our righteousness is as filthy rags. As beautiful as it is that we are waking up, remember who you know what we've come out of and what we really deserve. All right, so constantly try to um, try to uh, find yourself trying to be molded in His image. Okay, and there's particular rebukes that the Lord will it'll be left field to where it's not a hundred percent accurate the way it's being brought to you, but you have to have the humility enough to say, well, okay, well, whatever the Lord wants me to get from this. You know, Lord, help me see it. There's always a, a an emotional thought that's going to come to anything that you're presented with. But then there's a spiritual reaction. And that's where we win when we when we don't follow the flesh, the emotion of a thing. Yet we uh, we, we 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 look for the spiritual meaning in what's happening. And then you're able to make better decisions that lead unto life. So when you deal with rebuke, all right, in order for us to be an acceptable sacrifice, there's particular rebukes and things we're going to have to take and, and, and be okay with, okay, that, uh, you know, ultimately is going to help your sacrifice, man. It's going to show the Lord that, that you're willing. You're not high-minded. We don't want to be one of those who are suddenly destroyed beyond recovery. All right. And you have Israelite. You, you see examples now of men who did never take correction. Now, the Lord got them in a very, very reprobate spirit, spirit, man. And there's no remedy to it. They're through. Then the destruction is coming. So constantly you know, judge yourself, constantly grow, constantly be willing to take correction. And sometimes I'm telling you, there's going to be rebukes that come at you and you, you're going to be like, huh? And you, you'll know some of it could be true, but then you'll take that little piece that was a little bit off that really wasn't technically true. And you'll try to focus on that and say, nah, nah. And that's where the Lord have, you know, give you, <laughs> you know, choose life. So that's where you ultimately con. Sometimes con is the best answer to what's coming your way as a brother, you know, or as a sister con. Okay. Because sometimes you could, you could, you know, try to justify yourself in one way and this and that, and you miss out on the whole point and you're through. A lot of times, brothers, con, a simple con will get you to the kingdom. <laughs> All right. Because in that con, you're like, well, you know, I, I don't know. But Lord, you know, maybe, you know, and, 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 you know, later on down the line, you'll understand anyway. It says when the right is 13 minutes, we only have one scripture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, nigga, how, how many? All right, let's get through this. We go just read through some of them, break them down quickly. But um, spirit, hey, the spirit is like the wind, right? This is uh Proverbs twenty nine and two. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And you can see that now, all right. And see, that's the beauty of what we're teaching. You know, although the kingdom of heaven starts with a rod of iron, okay. You know, the, the end all be all after the Edomites are destroyed, you know, is, you heathen are going to learn the ways of righteousness. You know, that's, you know, ultimately what, what, you know, what we're teaching, you know, you never, you'll never be, never be on our level. Okay. But at some point you're going to rejoice because the law, statutes, and commandments being implemented into the earth is going to clean the earth. It's going to clean the atmosphere. It's going to make family structures uh, 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 back the standard thing. Everything is going to be back in order. And order leads to happiness. Okay? But, you know, the, the scripture talks about the rod of iron. Yeah, you know, that that's a big part of the kingdom being established too. But that's for what? You to learn the ways of righteousness and understand and to pay for the evil you've done. But the, the end all be all of the righteous ruling is everybody rejoicing. OK, at some point, all right, the earth is going to be filled with rejoicing. Now, the heathen, 
will never have the laws written in them. So they're always going to be subject to sin. They're always going to be subject to going off. They'll be corrected. All right. But what's what's going to come from the, uh, them being corrected? Their people being being fearing the Lord more. OK, <laughs> anyway. So when the righteous are in authority, everybody rejoices. But when the wicked bear rule, Esau, he's the personification of wicked. He's the quintessential nigga. OK, he 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 ultimately rules by wicked means. He he undermines, you know, uh, the, the order of the Lord. So what happens? Decay follows. Mourning follows. Sickness follows. And see, when it's all said and done, you, you heathen are going to understand the importance of order. So you're living wanton and doing things out of order. When it's when, when you see the judgment okay, of these Edomites and when you feel that rod of iron and when it's all said and you're going to you're going to get it. OK, order is important. The, the, the order of Yahweh Bashmiah Shai. OK, and the sons of God being, you know, established in the earth is important, man. It leads to happiness. It says, whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Okay, and if you uh, uh, and when you when your father sees that you're dwelling in wisdom, okay, it, it it rejoices his heart. Like even brothers um can testify. I can testify. You know, my father is not a believer. All right, but when he was around the brothers and when he sees me, you know, and I mean, you know, helping him out even with particular herbs, like he's 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 like, wow, how the hell do you know all of this stuff? You know, as he's getting up in age and going through ailments, you know, he could see like, damn, you know, my 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 son, whatever he's into, I mean, ultimately, <laughs> hey, it, it rejoices him. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. The man who loves wisdoms, love uh, loves wisdom brings joy to his father all right and there you go your father sees how you're operating you know although he didn't teach us these things you know you're, you're the, our fathers didn't teach us the law statutes commandments the names of the lord however you know it was hey, we came out of his loins so he's looking at you as you're you know growing as a man and and you know the way you're handling things he's like man okay just as you do if you have a son okay or a daughter you know when when they when they do right and you see good qualities you know in the in them it does give you you know like you know that's my boy you know it says but he that keep it company with harlots spendeth the substance always uh, uh, running behind some damn woman okay and harlots okay and prostitutes ain't just women that's you know on street corners okay I mean, uh, these, these women all of these a lot of these women are harlots period and they they put it on the internet i you know I, i'm gonna get your money okay i'm with men from you know you, you take them out on a date okay you uh <laughs> you know you and, and they say well shit if you just give me three hundred dollars you know girl don't be giving up no pussy for free go give me you get you get you three hundred dollars out of the deal you have women that live their life like that all right. And you got brothers who got spirits on them behind women and men, period, that have spirits on them behind women. So they'll end up throwing their whole damn life away. Now, imagine you had a son. Which one would bring you more joy? One who who loves wisdom. Right. And you, or one who, who just wastes all his damn money chasing after a damn woman. No, hell no. Nah. <laughs> all right. So you don't want to be. In that spirit, you're just constantly wasting all of your money on some damn woman. No. Hell no. That's not that's not the spirit. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with, you know, you get your woman something. Hey, that, that's between you and your woman how you deal. But when you lose your wits behind women, Okay, like that dude on Players Club who you know following the, the the stripper around, you know, stalking her, spending, wasting all his damn check on her. You know that ain't the, that ain't the spirit to be in. It says a king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Okay, read that in NLT. A king gives stability to his nation. Okay, 
And who's going to be the king in the kingdom of heaven? Okay. This is the order. The most high, Yahweh, but on earth through Yahweh Shai. And then he, what did the scripture say about Yahweh Shai? He's the king of kings. Okay. And who's that, who's that very next king in line under Yahweh Shai? King David. Okay. And then, you know, the 12 and then the rest of the 144. And we, we hey, <laughs> that's going to be the, 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 the rulership and government of our nation in the kingdom of heaven. That's going to be the stability of our nation. So you look at the rulership of this world. So the king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receives it gifts overthrows it. Okay. And one who's willing to, uh, you know, shift the integrity of what makes, you know, his nation stable and take a bribe. What is a bribe? You know, someone telling you, okay. I'll give you a million dollars if you tell the children of Israel uh, the, the name of the Lord ain't Yahweh and his son's name ain't Yahweh Shai. Just call him God and Jesus. Okay, well, what, is, what will he do? He'll then, you know, wiggle his way into teaching that. All right. And what does that do? That destroys and, and then, the, the you know, the kingdom is, you know, overcome. Okay. His nation is overcome. So the water Yahweh Bashim Shai for the remnant who the Lord, you know, he's going to do Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Lord's going to put a spirit in them not to budge, man. So therefore, the gates of hell ain't going to prevail. It says, a man that flattered his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. All right. In LT, to flatter friends is to lay a trap for their feet. All right. Someone who's constantly, yeah, brother brother oh my god I mean, you my elder you my brother oh my god every time i see your video i'm flipping you know oh man those dudes who be in that spirit okay years down the line they be the the ones who <laughs> slander your name talking shit all right or they'll compliment you and you know they're about to ask for something that type of spirit <laughs> you know there's nothing wrong with complimenting brothers and naturally we do that we build each other up but there's you can be balanced with that shit man because when you when somebody is constantly complimenting you or, or, or it, it, it comes with a it's like what, what's up with you you know what, what do you what do you maybe it's some because sometimes brothers do that because there's something going on in them in their mind about you right so what they do is they try to trick the lord or trick themselves into believing they like you or believing they don't have a problem with you by overly complimenting you and it becomes tacky. <laughs> All right. So, the, 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 you know, but this scripture is saying, you know, one who flattered his neighbor spread it a net for his feet, meaning you, you got something up your sleeve. OK, it says in the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. <laughs> It says, evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape it, shouting for joy. There you go. And people don't understand a lot of the BS that they do, a lot of the deals that they take, a lot of the, the, the way that they're walking. They don't see that they're, they're walking into a snare that the Lord has set for them. Okay? But the righteous escape it. Why? Because he's going to consider, uh, wait a minute. You know, let me, let me, well, let me peep this out. You know, uh, nah, something ain't right. Nah, maybe I shouldn't do this. Nah, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I should repent openly. I'm tripping. And what happens? You get, you, you're out of that sh snare. Okay? It says, the righteous considered the cause of the poor, but the wicked regarded not to know it. I mean, in this world period, the poor, all right? I'm not even talking about the uh, homeless because we're the poor. The poor really represents the elect. As a matter of fact, Real quick in the book of uh, hold up. Okay, the book of uh, Zephaniah three and twelve. It says, and this is the house of David. Okay, I will also leave in the midst of the an afflicted and poor people. Okay. And they shall trust in the name of Yahweh. Okay, so we, the remnant, represent that afflicted and poor. 
And I don't care if you got a job making two hundred thousand dollars, man. You poor. <laughs> All right. We we're downtrodden here. We're we're we looked down upon. But we're rich in faith. So the world doesn't really consider our cause. Okay? The righteous consider the cause of the poor, and that's why we do these lessons. Okay, now the homeless you always will have with you. All right. That ain't what that's when it says the poor, it's not always talking about a destitute person who's begging. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving them money, but the poor that we're really uh, concerned with and that we're, you know, is the, is the elect, the downtrodden, but rich in faith. Okay. So the godly, we take that into consideration. Okay. But the wicked regarded not to know the wicked don't give a damn about what we going through. Okay, and Jake period is the poor. And ultimately, we, we consider the cause of our people as well. As we go out and cry, you know, to the Lord to restore righteousness to the earth. That's all in, 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 in the end. Of, at the end of the day, all you Israelites are going to benefit from that. Okay, all of you Israelites at some point are going to be perfect with the law, statutes and commandments written in you. Through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, through the sacrifice of the elect. Okay? It says, So the righteous considered the cause of the poor, and this world doesn't look at the poor. This world hates the poor. Okay? They use them, they, 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 they don't give a damn about us. Okay? And even in our king kingdom, though you're going to have. Okay, even in Israel, there's going to be order and rank. All Israel is going to have land. All Israel is going to be good. Okay, but even of the heathen, it won't be like this. Okay, it won't. You know, when it's all said and done, yeah, you Edomites, they're going to be all through the whole time, through. Okay, but you know, you you ain't going to have people walking around the planet Earth, all right, shitting on the sidewalk. Okay, in a, in a winter. Having to lay outside now as a punishment we can do that <laughs> right but it ain't gonna be like this all right overall scornful men bring a set a city into a snare but wise men turn it the way raft okay and scornful men they don't care what they say they don't care how they act they don't care how they, they don't have no manners so what happens is you know you bring a snare into your friends and that's what niggas do to a city. Okay, and that look at Esau. He's that he's a mocker. Okay? And ultimately the the, the whole the whole town is going to, you know, suffer <laughs> of his bullshit. Okay? His whole na his whole nation is going to uh, fall through him being a damn asshole, the rulers. Anyway, scornful man bringeth the city into a snare, but the wise man turneth away wrath. OK, and a wise man will always consider a wise man is thinking of, you know, the, is balanced in his approach. He's not inclined to react on that first emotion. He's he's constantly judging according to the 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 the, uh, the law, statutes, commandments and the spirit through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's ultimately what we're going to do in the kingdom. We ain't going to have to have go to a playbook and be like, well, this law says that here. All right, or you broke uh, in section C. You know, it's going to be the, the we're just going to operate. <laughs> all right, with the complete instruction of the Most High on Earth and dominate in righteousness. All right, mockers can get a whole town agitated, but the wise will calm anger. Okay, if a wise man contended with a fool, foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. All right. Wow. If a wise man contended with the foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Like on the comment boards, a nigga come with a stupid comment. And in your flesh, you'd be like, oh, man, this nigga. And you respond. Now you in a whole back and forth with a foolish man. And then you get tired of him and you stop responding. Oh, you running, nigga. Right. That's why it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for us to debate. Uh, the Sakara. What will come from that? What will come from 
contending with a guy who, who openly tells Israel, as a priest, you can have sex on the Sabbath. A priest. You see? So sometimes it's, it's best to leave off from a foolish man because you will never get rest. He ain't going to stop. Okay? <laughs> so some shit you just leave, you know, some some particular, you got to pick your battles wisely. Some people ain't even worth it, man. It says the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seeks his uh, his soul. There you go. And Esau's the bloodthirsty, man. So he's setting snares and traps to get us all blamed. Okay? But we're here that the upright in spirit be delivered. It says, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it till after. There you go. Okay? You can't utter everything that's in your mind. Everything that's in your mind in every situation don't need to be said either. You may be thinking something sometimes, but it doesn't have to be said. Okay? Be very, very mindful of when you say something, how you say something, who you're talking to. Okay. Be very mindful of what you say. You don't want to utter every your whole mind. <laughs> no, you 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 hold back. Okay. Sometimes a brother can make a point. Now it's good to add on to points. Don't get it twisted. But sometimes a brother can make a point, and sometimes you can let that brother's point be the point. Okay. These are all things we're learning in our walk. Because continuously adding to a brother's point, sometimes let the brother's point be his point, even though you may can add more to it. OK, but sometimes you do add to it. All right. It's, it all got to be done in the spirit. OK. And if you're constantly doing it, you have to you have to remind you, you catch yourself. All right. Let me balance it out. It says if a. Uh. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. <laughs> yep. NLT, if a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. And you got particular men in Israel who hearken to lies, who pays attention, who gives ear to BS and madness. And what they're doing is instead of, you know, uh, 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 you know, creating upstanding citizens of Israel, as Yahweh said, you're making men that are following you twice the child of hell that they were before they learned the truth. All right. In Esau, he hearkens to lie. Everything he pushes is, is, is dealing with a lie. Pseudoscience. So what, what comes from that? Wicked people. Okay. People who believe in Darwinism and all of this garbage. At the end of the day, the reason why there's so much wickedness and, and evil happening in the planet earth is because the standard in the planet earth is off the ruler is off okay everybody's pride there's no fear of the lord in this land why is that because the ruler has hearkened to lies the poor and the deceitful man meet together the lord delighted both their eyes all right in lt the poor and the oppressed have this in common the lord gives sight to the eyes of both there you go the lord loves the lowly the meek the humble okay the the the, the underdog that's who he's dealing with and you you all are gonna see even in israel right now who's the underdog who's the most hated who's the who who's the the barbarian the 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 worst camp Ugh. what did bishop jephthah say bishop jephthah said <laughs> these brothers ain't did nothing for their peoples we ain't did nothing we don't offer no value we ain't did nothing for israel you know when in every major city you know where brothers are preaching ultimately it was through the brothers starting with the apostles and elders of great millstone who start going out that you all started to ultimately form your camps and go out okay wasn't nobody preaching in these particular areas where brothers are teaching Okay, but through the sacrifice of the men of the Lord going out constantly, that became a normal thing. Then you set up your platform. Then you want to act like 
the apostles and elders of great mills, there was through them lighting the fire under the ashes of younger men that younger men then start going out to preach. That wasn't a common thing. That was a East Coast, Philly, all right, maybe LA thing. But now you got brothers bringing it out in Texas, okay, in, in, in New Orleans, in Baton Rouge, man, okay, in, in Nebraska, different places where, hey, man, uh, uh, Indiana, Indiana, like you, like that was not heard of until the men of the Lord started going out and preaching and that warmed it, that warmed it up for everybody. So to act like the apostles and the elders ain't did nothing for Israel and we're just these ragtag losers and you're, you're just unfair. But the Lord looks at the ones that everybody uh, uh, looks down upon. Okay, and we've been the ones who've been willing to tell you like it T.I. is, like it is. Anyway, it says the poor and the deceitful man meet together. It says the Lord lighten it both their eyes. Let me see what does it say, deceitful. Let's look at this word, deceitful. Oops. Or deceitful is the uh, 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 oppressor, injury, oppression. Okay, so that ain't speaking of deceitful like a liar, but um, this is speaking more of a uh, uh oppressed or an oppressor or an injury, and we're injured. What scriptures say, uh. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is going to be translated. Anyway, it says, Proverbs 29 and 14, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. All right. If a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. And that's going to be the beauty of the kingdom of heaven, man. It's going to be for the benefit of of. of, of Humanity, period. Everybody's going to benefit from the sons of God being set up. Man, I cannot heart. Uh, I cannot say state that enough. I think about that often, man. How you know the 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 multi the the well the well the welfare of the world is the elect. The multitude of the wise, where wisdom dwells, that's still going to eventually lead to everybody benefiting. The air being clean, the water being clean. Okay. It says the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Okay. The rod and reproof that you put on your child. All right. It gives wisdom. Correction brings wisdom. You say, okay, I did it like this. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to consider I got a whooping because I did that. Okay. I'm not going to do this. It's going to make my mother. I mean, my father and my mother mad. Okay. So the rod and reproof gives wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Okay? And the child just left ultimately uh, uh, without correction eventually becomes a demon, man. And you bring your mother to shame. You grow up a wild beast. You grow up, to get you, you sagging your pants. All right, you get, you get into a gang, get shot. Right? So the rod and reproof is ultimately synonymous with wisdom as well, man. An undisciplined child is ultimately a disgrace. So we want to, we don't want to be that undisciplined child. And wisdom is our mother, right? It says the rod, let me, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth. But the righteous shall see their fall. There you go. And we, I mean, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. So what? Transgressions. Let's look at this word, transgressions. What has multiplied in the earth under the, the, the heathen rulership, especially Esau? Sin. Transgression is pa shy. Pa, hold up, pa shy. Yep. But this can also be, I know it's uh, in, a, in a good sense as well. Yep, Pashai. 
It says transgression, uh, rebellion, transgression against God in general, recognized by a sinner as God forgives guilt, transgression for punishment, offering for transgression. Let's see what this rule says. A rebel transgress to revolt, to rebel against. Okay. You can't be a rebel in righteousness. Let's see here. Singular against construct. Yep. Anyway, what it, that's that re rebellion against the Lord has increased under wicked rulership. Okay? And the, the godly, the elect are gonna see their downfall. It says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. So when you discipline your children, okay, you're going to start to see that that child is more inclined, is going to be a better, you know, person. And you love to see that. You love to see your child being thoughtful. You love to see your child with good manners. Okay? That's why you have to correct them. Now, as, as sons of the Most High, how much more us? Okay? How much more us as we're the sons of God? Why would we be labeled the sons of God in the latter days? Is because of our willing to take discipline. Children take discipline. Children don't get in their emotions behind correction. Okay, he may be hurt for a minute, but next next second he's he, he's he's good. But he gonna know I ain't gonna play with my dad dad like this no more. Okay? That's the importance of fathers. Okay, because women, when you deal with the, 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 the brain, okay, men's brains are bigger, right? But when you deal with a woman's brain, the part that deals with emotions and speech, okay, it's, it's bigger. Why? Because women, the, you know, you need that emotional, uh, 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 you know, you need that first teacher of, for a child. OK, and then that's going to require, you know, mercy. You know, that's why women go, go, ga, ga, la, la, la. The women are childish. You know, they, they have that because it, and, and, and it's not, you know, oh, you, put you, to do, you know, look at Buka, my Buka, my pooter. You know, the Lord put that spirit on that, you know, the, that part dealing with, you know, that speech and that children need that. Right now, that emotion should not run the world. That emotion should not be at the at the at the, uh, the top of a, of a uh, Fortune 500 company, <laughs> but that emotion has its place. Okay, so when you do, when you look at women, ch their children, they uh, women allow more bullshit. The child is able to get away with more because the, the woman is more so. Thinking, oh no, that's my baby. But the father's like, oh, this nigga's act, that nigga looks stupid. You know, the father is more so like, nah, nah, that ain't cool. And sometimes I'm gonna tell you, you women, this when your husband puts an order to your son in front of you, that's wicked and all for you to in front of that child undermine what the father just said. Nah, nah, do nah, nah. Here it is, the man could say, well, do this. Or no, you can't have no ice cream. And the mother being what? Emotional because we just dealt with, and I'm not, I don't know the, you know, the the, the uh, technical terms of it, but yeah, their brains, that part that deals with speech and emotion is bigger. But overall, the, the, the male brain is bigger for many purposes. It's more, you know, it's a lot to that. But anyway, um, when a man puts down the law, you as it's not your role as a woman to come and say, well, you because you have an emotion. Oh, he just wants some ice cream. He got an A on his report card. No, the father said no. Nigga, it's too, so you can't have no ice cream right now. It's too late. Or well, whatever reason he got. He may he be been eating too much ice cream. Whatever. The father made an order, it's in the spirit. Let it be. Anyway, the scripture says this. Correct thy son, and he shall give the rest. Is why we need we need our we need we need we need the kingdom. We need we're too far gone, man. Fathers out of the house, and you got these young men and women, these little boys and girls, growing up without 
really being corrected. Okay? <laughs> Woo! And now these wild animals are at the club, you know, drunk, listening to trap music, pregnant, having children, and they raising their children up. It's just a, a, a legacy of failure that we hope right, is, is at the we're at the end of that. The two thirds got to go anyway. Anyway, let's see here. We need the Lord, man. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. He shall be a delight unto thy soul. Okay? Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And that word vision, okay? Real quick. Is what? Let's see. Chazawan. Chazawan. It's a nice Hebrew name. Um, a vision. Okay, let me just get to the point. To divine, divine communication. All right, <laughs> from the Lord. All right, an oracle, a prophecy. Okay, and how do we get the prophecies through the Lord? Putting it into the minds of men, showing them, and they go out and teaching it. And knowing the prophecies is very important. So where there's no vision, where 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 ultimately the prophecy <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with the with the whole decision making process, people perish. Look at Jake in the church. Look at Jake in the world. They're being led and ran without any true vision. They don't have, they don't know what's coming. They don't get what they don't know how the Lord feels about America. They don't know the future of America so what happens they don't know about the MOTB and it, you know they just out here and they're going to be snared and taken so people perish where there's no vision where the prophets all right ain't ain't the leaders it's over but he that keepeth the law happy is he there you go it says a servant will not be corrected by words for though he understand he will not answer Let's read it here in the night in the uh, NLT. Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not needed. Okay, so sometimes you have to, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and, and we're servants of the Lord. And sometimes the Lord has to chastise us, man. Okay, sometimes word, uh, sometimes you got to uh, experience <laughs> is the answer. You know, it says, see, is thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Okay? There is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. All right? And look at Deacon Haka. Look at a lot of these guys. They're hasty to just say whatever the hell they want because they're 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 they're, they're ultimately um led by their emotion. When you're led by your emotion, you'll do anything to protect your ego. You'll say anything. You won't have any quarrels about your speech or what you're saying or who's what who's listening to you or who how what you're saying could affect the next person you're just thinking about your ego or your flesh there's more hope than a fool than for a nigga that comes in that spirit man he that is he that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length a servant pampered from childhood will become a rebel. Wow. So you see, Jake wants this thing to be delicate. You can't delicately bring a you. Sometimes you have to scrutinize. Sometimes you have to chastise. That, that, that is a part of growth. Now you do it with wisdom, of course. But it has to happen. There are points where it's gonna get nah, it's gonna get bitter. Okay, so a pampered servant. All right, will become a rebel. Okay, and this is why, even in the '80s, man, you know the whoopings were in. Now whoopings are look. Oh, you don't have to. Oh my God, you whooped him. Now the child can take your ass to jail for giving him a whooping. All right, now in certain situations, all right, you talk to your child, but there are times. <laughs> <laughs> Where you go after? Hey, 
All right. Now, in this world, you can go to jail for that. Now, you don't abuse your children. Punch him in his face. No, the scriptures talks about beating them on their sides. OK. But they, the, the, the child has to at some point feel like, oh, shit. And that's how we are as children. And the Lord takes us through things. And if you don't, uh, 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 you know, accept of the reproof, hey, eventually you'll become a rebel. Anyway, an angry man stirred up strife and a f furious man abounded in transgression. And you don't want to be that angry, furious man. Because eventually you're not going to be justified in your actions, man. The scriptures say be angry, but sin not. But you don't want to be a hot tempered person. Now you have brothers who are more rough around the edges. You have brothers who are more forward. Okay, but it all got to be in the spirit and with balance. Okay. It says. <laughs> yeah. A, a, a man's pride will bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride ends in humiliation. And you see all of the pride going on in Israel? You just watch as we continue going how it's going to end for these people. Just watch. <laughs> all right? Pride is not a good thing, man. Men should not be proud. Okay? And what's the number one indicator that a man is proud? When he refuses to accept of correction and criticism when he can't be wrong when you never hear him all right you know just like like the dude uh like alizar they, it took scrutiny it, it took israel screaming on his ass for him to say all right we were wrong about the Passover, but you niggas you know horrible people man horrible leadership pride is going to bring you low okay Pride is not good, brothers. That is the last spirit you want to be in dealing with this power. Yahweh through Yahweh Shai and the angels. You do not want to be proud. All right? It says, Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. He hear it cursing and beareth it not. <laughs> That's Esau. If you assist the thief, you only hurt yourself. You're a soul to tell the truth. But you dare not testify, and that's against the uh, that's against the uh, the uh, the law. All right, I believe that's Exodus or Leviticus. Let me see here. Sometimes you think about something you want to. You no, know, maybe Leviticus. Yep, Leviticus five and one. I read it in NLT. If you are called to testify about something you have seen or that you know about. It is sinful to refuse to testify for you will be punished for your sin. All right. There's a lot of wickedness going on in Israel and you, you don't have Israel testifying on it. Now, um, I uh, recently saw a video where uh, Maharaja, which he, 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 at some point he was losing his damn mind, but it seems like he's, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe, the, you know. He seems like he's in a better place because he was doing skits and screaming. And I was like, what the hell's up with this guy? Dressing up for Halloween, <laughs> he's bucking out. But I seen him recently do a video getting on Jake for teaching sex on the Sabbath, man. So that's a good thing. You know, remember, you got to testify, man. Like if, like, like against these dudes saying we don't know the name of the Lord, you teach the name of the Lord, you got to say something. You got to tell Israel because what if one of their members is the sheep's? Right, we we gotta be there for the sheeps. So you gotta say something. You gotta be like, nah, man. You gotta testify of that man's uh, transgression. He that sin, rebuke before all. That's scriptural. But if you're a partner with a thief, okay. And the scriptures say, those who uh, who have ill intent are likened unto thieves and robbers. That's in uh uh. uh the book of John. What is that? Uh, hold up. John, the 10th chapter. Let me see here. Yep. John 10 and 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheeps did not hear them. 
And that's these guys with these wayward doctrines making merchandise of you. Okay? They're these hirelings. Okay? These hirelings, man. So you don't want to be a partner with a thief, man. You only hurt yourself. You know it's wrong, but you're doing unity camps with these people. You're giving them Godspeed. You know? The fear of a man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth this trust in Yahweh shall be safe. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. So we fear the Lord. We don't fear Esau, Edom. But we fear the Lord because we know what the Lord is capable of doing. All right, the scriptures say, uh, fear not he that has, you know, power to, to, to put you to death or put you in jail, but fear the Lord, all right, who can destroy your soul. It says, many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord, okay? There you go. <laughs> An unjust man, you seek favor from the uh, the ruler, all right, but you, you become a, 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 a sambo. All right, so it's not a good look. All right, the, the judgment comes from the Lord. You need to seek favor from the Lord. Fearing the Lord even makes you treat people in your everyday life better. All right, or not be rash, or not be uh, fearing the Lord is the best thing going. All right, and you apply that in any situation you're in, and that's wisdom. All right, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay, when you just say, when you before you do, you think. Before you say, you 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 consider. Okay, what you say, you consider. You're willing to say salakia. You're willing to the the show, you know, compassion. You're willing to show you uh you 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 uh you you feel you know bad about what you said or did, and you you let the congregation know I didn't mean that. I'm salakia. That's fear in the Lord. When you see brothers do that, they fear the Lord. A brother. A brother, you see a brother or a, a elder or apostle a bishop do a video and they say, I know I said this in the last video, but, you know, I didn't mean it like that. This is what I meant. Yada, yada, yada. You know, why is that? Because that 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 man went and considered of what he said. And he's like, you know what? You know, let me present that in a better way. Well, that shows you fear the Lord anyway. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. So we're an abomination to Esau, and Esau is an abomination unto us. Just as the two-thirds wicked Israelites are an abomination to us, and we are an abomination unto them. To go into prophecy, you know, to, to really be about the Lord's business, you see that that Jake ain't with that. They ain't, they ain't really feeling it. In their opinion, it could be so much better. You know, but um, that's pretty much it. Um, hold up. Let's see here. That's pretty much it. So, uh, Lord willing, you are edified. How do I do this? Hold up. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, man. So let me give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahakudash, double honors to the apostles and elders. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.